So it was after he had buried him that he spoke to his son saying, when I am dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. Follow. Next verse. For the same which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines on the high places which are in the city of Samaria will surely come to pass. What happened? This man came and prophesied to the altar. Remember the words he said. He said, altar, priests are going to be burnt on you. Are going to be killed on you. And bones of men, those bones will be brought out of their graves and don't don't, don't what burnt on this altar. Now, this old prophet heard what this man of God said, and his first thought was, How come God did not tell me this? Then this old prophet began to use sorcery. Now, he was a prophet of God. But then he applied sorcery. Now that's, even till today, people do it. Men of God do it. Sometimes even without knowing. See, it's easy to step out of God and enter into sorcery. And then you enter into sorcery, then you bring that sorcery into God. (laughs) Am I speaking strange things today? So, he began to wonder. Now that's one of the things experience does to you. If you don't put your heart in check with God. He began to apply sorcery. Knowing that this is trouble. For God not to tell him. It means he will be included in the judgment. Are you listening to me? For Remember I told you something. The moment God tells you something. A bad thing that will happen. Automatically. That word that I've come to you. Carries with it a covenant of what? Exemption. So you will be too foolish to hear that disaster is coming and the disaster comes and it consumes you. Now this man did not hear from the Lord that these things are going to happen. So he got him troubled. And in his troubled state, he began to seek true sorcery. It was by the sorcery that an angel, not a demon, please understand me. It was in the sorcery that an angel spoke to him. If you want to add, if you don't want to be involved in this calamity that is about to come, do this. If you can get this man of God to disobey God, listen, he will disobey God, then he will die and make sure when he dies, bury him in your tomb. And when you die, make sure they bury you with him. If not, your bones will be burnt. So this man was concerned about what happens to his bones after he dies. You see, he he made up his mind that if any judgment is coming at all, I don't want to be part of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, I don't want to be part of it. The only prophecy that man of God said was that this altar, priests will be born on it. So it was a judgment that was coming on priests. Now priests means prophets, all of them that minister at the altar, or release the sound of God. So the prophecy this man came to prophesy was that God's judgment is coming on men of God. And this is the judgment. They will be judged on this altar. Are you listening to me? And this man, that's why I pointed out to you that that place where he says he was lying, he was not lying. He heard something. He heard something. Now sometimes when we dwell in the realm of angels, let me tell you this truth. See, angels are knowledgeable. Are you listening to me? Angels are knowledgeable. And angels too can go wrong. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Most times, when people get into sorcery, there are lots of things we blame. There are demons, don't get me wrong. There are lots of demons on the earth. But you see, when a man carries the anointing of God and starts dabbling into sorcery, most likely he will not operate with demons. He will operate with angels. But guess what he will do? He will even cause angels to sin. 
That's what happened here. And so this man began to cry. How can I avert this judgment? How can I escape from this judgment? Now, he didn't say when the judgment is going to come to pass. I hope you know that. He didn't say when the judgment is going to come. He just said this is what is going to happen. But by the wisdom the angel gave to him. So when he said, an angel of the Lord appeared to me, he was not lying. Please understand this. He wasn't lying. Because he couldn't have known what to do if it was not an angel that showed him. Not God, though. It was not God that told him. It was an angel. See how it operates. <laughs> Now, you know something bad is going to happen. Or something is coming your way. How do I escape this thing that is coming? Then you are told that the only way to avert this thing is if one, two, three happens. But you look at those one, two, three that will happen and say, hi, hi. On the normal, you say, ah, no, I don't want to involve my hand in that kind of thing. You remember the king of Moab, right? Remember the story of the king of Moab? Now, Israel was fighting a battle with Moab. And the battle got so tough for the king of Moab. He looked for a weak link to pass through. It couldn't work. Then the Bible says he did something. He took his eldest son that should reign instead of him, right? Now, before then, before they even went to that war, Israel had gone to see the man of God, Elisha, and asked him concerning that battle. And Elisha had said to them, look, it's a small thing. You will completely defeat Moab. So they went with that confidence to the battle. But as they were fighting the battle, the king suddenly took his eldest son, the Bible carefully mentioned, that should reign in his stead, took him and offered him as a burnt offering. And the Bible says immediately he did that there was great indignation and God drove Israel back to their land. What of the word of God that the man of God spoke that they will win that battle? Cancelled. Why? The king did something. The king did a sacrifice that was not normal. Are you listening to me? Who gave him that wisdom? It's not a demon. He's a king. See, the Bible says we will judge angels. You don't know why I say we will judge angels. Angels make mistakes. Too. So, there is an angel that was helping the king of Moab. Every authority has an angel with it. Every authority. Good or bad. Are you listening to me? Every authority has an angel. Now, the angel of that country... Or oh, that, that, that authority, his job is to protect the king. So this man began to wonder, how do I escape this judgment? How do I escape this judgment? Now, what should he have done? He should have simply gone before the Lord in repentance. Father, I must have sinned. That's why you bypass me. If he had repented before the Lord, the Lord would have shown him mercy and given him. It's not that he does not hear God again. It just simply puts that God have exempted him from his program. The man was still hearing God. I will show you. You saw it. The man was still hearing God. But when God does not tell the important things again, it means he has shifted from you. It's not that he hates you now. But your ways does not fit in. That's what happened to a lot of people, especially when they become successful. They follow God, they love God, they walk with God, then they become successful. Their minds begin to shift away from God. So now they only go to God at convenience. Are you following what I'm saying? The only, oh, the only thing God talks to them now is about their business. It's about their, their success. God is not visiting them, visiting them again and saying, I'm concerned about um, an amber state. You know, if, if I can raise men that can, God does not talk to them again about those things. All God talks, the same thing with ministers. All God talks to you now about this is, I'm going to expand you on every side. I'll bring rich men to your church. That's all they hear. Everything to do with success. 
God does not share his burdens with them anymore. They still hear God. But now, when you now hear another man carrying the burden of the Lord and speaking it with so much clarity, they become concerned. God did not tell me this one. What is required at that stage is repentance. Go before the Lord naked. Lie on your on the floor and say, Father, how did this word bypass me? You didn't tell me this. And stay there, bringing repentance, and the Lord will visit you. But this man, instead of taking that route, no, he didn't. He rather chose the way of sorcery. This is also written, you're looking at me somehow. Ah, give me numbers. Numbers, 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 numbers. The way some of you are looking at me, Pastor, how can a man of God use sorcery? Numbers chapter 24. Numbers chapter 24. Now you remember the story of Balaam, right? You remember the story of Balaam. Now, Balaam was a man of God. True or false? Huh? True. Okay. Balaam loved God. True or false? Balaam hears the voice of God. True or false? Now, so, there was a king named Balak. He sent messengers to Balaam. I says, hey, Balaam, there is a people that are crossing. I'm afraid. I don't like them. Please, come, call on the name of your God and curse them for me. See, by your cursing, they'll become weak. Then I can attack them. Okay? Then, Balaam said, wow. Okay, let me ask God. Because Balaam didn't know the people. He didn't know Israel. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, he went and prayed. He said, God, what do you think? God said, don't go. Then he came back and told the men, that sorry. God said, I should not follow you. They went back and they told Balak. Balak, sir. He said, he will not come. So, ah, what do you people tell him? No, we told him, you promised him this. Said, people are small men. The Bible says Balak sent more honorable men. So maybe the first time it was commissioners he sent, right? So this time he now sent ministers in his cabinet. He said, go and tell him. Take all these gifts. Go, give him. Tell him I will give him more. He should just come. So these ones went and he went to pray again. And God told him, saying, don't go. Sorry, I will not come. The king was persistent. And now you have heard God twice tell you don't go. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is what extra. When God tells you twice not to do something, that is the truth about that matter. Don't go again and bugging him. So he went and God told him this time, oh yeah, go. But listen, it is only what I tell you, you would speak. He said, yes, sir. Deal. So Balaam left by the word of the Lord. But was that the mind of God? No. On his way, he almost lost his life. You remember the story? Now when he got there, read the story from chapter 23, Numbers. When he got there, I'm giving you this background because I want to show you a scripture now. When he got there, he, he would tell Balak, um, offer seven sacrifices here, here, and here. And Balak will offer it. Then he will go to the Lord and say, Lord, hmm, what do you have to say? And God will speak to him. Then he will go and start blessing the people. And then Balak will say, stop! I say, curse them, not bless them. Yeah, but I told you now, it's only what God said I should say that I will say. Oh, no, stop, stop, stop. Then Balak will say, come, let's go to another place like this place. It's not a good place. He will take him to, read chapter 23, do that as a, a assignment. He will take him to another place. He said, what do I do? He said, okay, set up seven altars. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then he will do. And then he will go before the Lord. Now, he was combining God and sorcery. What does that mean? You are trying to find a path to get God to say what you want to hear. Now, that's how sorcery works. So he went again, and God will give him a word of blessing. And then he came and said, oh, they are blessed. Ah, stop it, stop it, stop it. No! Now watch. Verse 20, chapter 24. Verse 1. Now this is after all that events I'm just explaining to you now. Now when Balaam saw 
that it pleased the Lord to do what? To bless Israel. He did not go as at the other times to seek to use what? But he set his face towards the wilderness. Did you see that? So what was he using before? What was he using before? Was he a man of God or not? Did he backslide? He was not backsliding. He was not backsliding. See, the only caveat there that helped him was the deal he had with God. That you can go, but you must not open your mouth to say anything apart from what I put in your mouth. He said, yes, he agreed to that. Are you get? So when he went for the sorcery, the angel was there to give him what to say. If not, he would have brought a curse on Israel. Now, what happened in that Balaam's case? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Now, when God told him, go. The f- in the first place, the reason God was telling him, don't go, don't go, was because if you go, you will die. It's not like God will come and kill him. God has already put missionaries in place to safeguard Israel. So, if you cross, don't go say, you are my own son. They will kill you. You will die. That's why God was telling him, don't go. But when he bugged God and bugged the God, and I said, okay, go. Now, when God said go, truly, God didn't mean go and die. But now, when God has said go, God, too, had to send intelligence to the security network in that place that have allowed this man. Are you understand what I'm saying? That's how heaven operates. So, when he was on his way, Michael heard and said, What? Set up a defense immediately. Locate where this threat is coming from. They located it and he went and pinpointed that place. And truly he would have killed him. Now, it was while they were doing all that struggle, the intelligence came to Michael that he's under permission. But there is... Now, now why would he be under permission? Now, Michael is one of the toughest angels that God has. Are you following what I'm saying? And according to the Bible, he's the prince over Israel. That's why Israel can never be defeated. No nation can defeat Israel. None. I'm telling you, none. Till Jesus comes. None. So all this noise people are making, wah, 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 wah. You don't know the angel that is. That angel carries authority more than other angels. Now, what makes Michael great? Because of his integrity. I know that they stuck. Anyways. So, God now had to send an intelligence to him that I have permitted him to go. Why would you permit him to go? No, 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 no. He will only say what we give him to say. That was the only reason he was allowed to pass. So, when he was trying to use sorcery, he was followed. And words were put in his mouth, what to say. So him using his own wisdom after he had done it like three times he now came to his understanding that it appears these people, remember he doesn't know them it appears God is determined to bless these people let me stop using sorcery let me face the matter as it is so what's the difference between using sorcery and doing the one that he did this time, the one he was doing before, he will set up altars Use that altars to call forth the presence of God. <laughs> if you know how many men of God are doing sorcery and calling it prophetic things, I'm telling you the truth. They call it prophetic things. You see, you can use sorcery even as a man of God to save a wicked man's life. A wicked man who have done evil. I hear what I'm saying. Now that's how some of these wicked men and politicians are sustained. They will tell you they have one man of God that they are financing, that is praying for them. Now, that man of God, because of the offering he gets, right, will always seek to use sorcery to help the man. You don't want to hear what God is really saying. All you're looking for is, how do we save? I know how those things work. I know. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know. If you don't understand the ways of God, you'll be carried away and you will call yourself a prophet. Because truly speaking, you will walk and people will call you a prophet. Because you will say things. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But to what end? To what end? And let me tell you this truth. There is judgment day. That's one thing everybody must understand. There is judgment day. That day, that day, every man's work. So the, the evil man you help to sustain himself more than when he's supposed to be sustained, that day will be called to judgment. You will pay for it. All the wickedness, please hear me. All the wickedness that, and atrocities that that man did because you stood by him, by sorcery. Now, like I said, they don't even know it is sorcery. They think, I, I received the wisdom. I see, I've been in situations like that. You're praying for a matter, praying for a matter, Lord, no way. See, sometimes when we stand and insist on a thing, we actually get to that point where you, you stand at that junction, sorcery or the will of God. Because, see, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. That is truth. If I stand here and I ask, see, if I stand here and ask God, how do we remove Tinubu from government? I'll receive an answer. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll receive an answer. But it doesn't mean that's the will of God. Sometimes you get something by diehard fasting and prayer. My prayer for you that when you get to that junction, you will always see and choose the will of God. Yes. Because the thin line. So, back to our story. This man of God, now give me chapter 23, 2 Kings, verse 15. Moreover, the altar, now this is in, in chapter 22, Josiah was born. Josiah began to reign, and he was a young king. He began to reign at the age of eight years old, okay? And young man, right? Remember, the prophet said a, a child is going to be born, Josiah by name okay I call me name. from verse 15 moreover the altar that was at Bethel and the high place with Jeroboam the son of Neb Nebat who made Israel sin had made both the altar and the high places he broke down now he was doing all this stuff right he broke down and he burnt the high places and crushed it to powder and burnt the wooden image next verse next verse quickly and Josiah turned and he saw the tombs that were there on the mountains. And he sent and took the bones out of the tomb. Are you following? Remember the prophecy of that man of God? What did he say? Bones shall be what? Bones on that altar. Okay? So Josiah was carrying out. Just suddenly he turned to the mountains and he saw tombs. Okay? So he gave an order. He says, open those tombs. And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burnt them on where? And defied it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed. This was many years after. Who proclaimed these words? Next verse. Then he said, what gravestone is this that I see? So they were this. Open this one. Open this one. Open this one. Then he saw a gravestone. He said, which gravestone is this one? So the men of the city told him, it is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and proclaimed these things which you have done against the altar of Bethel. Are you following? Are you following? Next verse. And he said, let him alone. Let no one move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came from Samaria. The old prophet. Did you see that? Did you see that? That was the reason the old prophet killed him. This right here is the reason the old prophet killed that young prophet. He was trying to avoid judgment. And you know the sad part of it? Truly, he avoided the judgment. By the foolishness of the young prophet, his own life was what? Sorry. 